Welcome to this Dear Systems tutorial. In this video, we'll take a look at creating a simple sales order. A simple sale can be used for sales that do not require multiple fulfillments or multiple invoices and credit notes. If you do require to fill an order using multiple fulfillments, invoices and credit notes, please watch our separate video on the Advanced Sale module. To create a simple sale, navigate to the Sales module and select New Simple Sale. The Simple Sale screen consists of several sections. The first section is the Document Header. This contains details of your customer, their billing address, taxation status, sales price tier, sales representative, shipping address, and a comments area that can be populated and then searched with at a later date. The next section of the screen represents the steps in the sale workflow. Note that certain settings and options can customise aspects of the order of this workflow. Here we can see the stages as quote, order, pick, pack and ship, which are the three stages of fulfilment, invoice, credit note, restock, manual journals, and finally logs and attributes. Moving on to the body of the document, we have the order section itself. This first area is where you add products to your sale. The next section is additional charges, allowing you to specify details of any service type items associated with the sale. These can include freight, labour or any delivery charges for example. The last section on the screen is a customer credit option, which can be used for either receiving a deposit or simply applying an existing credit to offset the amount owing on the order. To begin creating a new sale, you need to first select a customer. You can either start typing in the name of a customer if they're already an existing one, or simply create a new customer on the go by pressing the plus button. Once a customer record is selected, all of the relevant information regarding this customer, such as the contact person, phone number, billing address, taxation status, pricing tier, sales rep, and shipping address will automatically populate. You can also use this checkbox to skip the quote stage and proceed straight to the sales order. If your business doesn't often generate quotes, you can skip the quote stage as default in General Settings, Sale Process Customization. You can also create this sale as a reoccurring task, with a reoccurring frequency to be weekly, fortnightly, monthly, quarterly, half yearly, or annually. And if your customer is purchasing on behalf of someone else, you can select the Ship to Different Company checkbox. This will enable a different name as well as a different address to be used on delivery documentation. Once the document header is complete, you can proceed to start generating your quote order lines. This is done by clicking the plus sign or the add more items link. Once a line is added, you can simply start typing in the name of the product or select it from the drop down list. Then tab or click out of the field to load the product. From here, you can provide any inline comments, specify the quantity and also the price. The price is going to be determined by the price tier attached to the customer. However, it can be changed on the go if required. Then, if needed, you can select discounts as well as change the tax rule. You can select different tax rules for different quote or order lines. Margins then display depending on the price and the average cost of this product, with the line total displaying at the end. Repeat this process for as many products as you require. Note that to view more detailed information about the product, including available stock, you can hover your cursor over the product name in the sale. If you'd like to then go to the product record itself, you can select the product name from within the tooltip. After completing additional charges, you can provide a quote memo that will be printed on the final document. To the right, you can also view the totals for the quote, which will include the before tax amount, tax, and also the total including the tax. Once the sales quote is ready to go, you can either authorise it or save it. Saving the quote will keep it in draft format, while authorising it will create an actual sales quote. Note that no stock is allocated at the time of creating a quote. Note that if you enable quote approval, you'll have the option to approve or reject an authorised sales quote. This can be enabled in General Settings, Sale Process Customization. 
Once the sales quote is authorized and approved, it can be printed or emailed to the customer. If the customer accepts the quote and you're ready to proceed to the order stage, you can simply go to the order tab and copy the data from the quote stage. If there are no changes to be made, you can simply authorize the order or again, save it in draft format. Note that saving the order in draft format will mean that the sales order will not show up in any reports and no stock will be allocated. Once you do authorize the sale, the stock is allocated to the customer in the sale. However, it can be reallocated to other orders until the pick stage is authorized. Once you've completed a sales order, you can proceed to either fulfillment or you can invoice the client. This will largely depend on your own business process. In this example, I'm going to assume that we prepare goods for shipment before invoicing. To start fulfillment, you'll need to navigate to the pick stage. Here, you'll have the option to copy all the items from the order, or pick manually by selecting the plus button and adding the relevant items to be picked. The advantage of doing this manually is that you can see the available quantities in different locations. If using auto pick, the system will automatically pick the available quantities and locations and populate the screen for you. Also, depending on the costing method, relevant inventory will be selected based on parameters such as its age or expiry. If you have inventory with batch or serial numbers, you'll be able to select them from the batch or serial number dropdown. To be able to do this manually for a batch or serial, you'll need to ensure the product is set to special costing method. Otherwise, the choice of batch or serial will be made by the system. More on costing methods can be found in our product management video. Once the pick stage is authorized, you can print or email a pick list from here. Now, let's move to the pack stage. Again, you can either add lines manually or copy details from the pick. Here you can identify the package numbers which will be used to ship each line. You can use this information to produce detailed packing slips where needed. Once the pack is complete, authorize the pack stage and continue to the shipping stage. Here, you can pre-populate the data from the pack stage in one of two ways. Either as individual lines, where each package number is able to have its own carrier and tracking details, or as group boxes, where all package numbers are combined into one line for a single carrier designation. Next, provide the ship date, carrier, and a tracking number if required. And finally, ensure the line is marked as shipped. Once the ship stage of the sale is authorized, cost of goods sold journals will be generated by Deer and ready to be synced over to your accounting application. Also note that if you're using a shipping integration, such as ShipStation, shipping information will be pulled from Deer into ShipStation automatically. Important to note that when using platforms such as ShipStation, to not include a tracking number at this stage. Otherwise, ShipStation will assume the order has already been fulfilled and will not pull it from Deer. If one or all of the pick, pack, ship fulfillment processes do not apply to your business process, you can skip these tasks by navigating to General Settings and Sale Process Customization. Then, Deer will automatically complete and authorize any of the pick, pack, and ship stages for you. This is commonly used for businesses that have the majority of Deer orders generated by e commerce platforms. We can now move over to the Invoice tab and produce an invoice for the customer. Selecting the invoice date will enable the due date to automatically populate based on the customer's payment terms. If there are no changes between the order and the invoice, you can simply authorize the sales invoice. This authorized sales invoice is now ready to be synced over into your accounting application. For all the details on the accounting application sync process, please watch the Xero and QuickBooks Online integration tutorials. We have two-way sync for payments, so you can choose to apply the payment to this invoice in Deer or within your accounting application once the invoice is synced over. Now that this invoice has been authorized, we can print or email it directly to the customer. And that concludes this video on simple sales orders.